All right, so now we have produced our acetyl-CoA. Now we can actually get into the citric acid, citric acid cycle or the TCA cycle. Citric acid cycle occurs over the course of eight reactions. These enzymes that catalyze the reactions associate through non-covalent interactions into what is known as a metabolon. Metabolons are groups of enzymes that are working in a pathway and more or less kind of aggregate together to efficiently pass the products from one enzyme to the next. So imagine it's a bunch of people that are like back to back and they're basically just, you know, trying to rotate something around all of those different people, the people being the enzymes, the substrate being the, su the substance that they pass along. <clears throat> so this is the pathway as a whole. Eight steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got NADH being produced here, here, and here. So there are three instances where NADH is produced. There's one GTP and one FADH2 that is produced. Now, keep in mind, whenever you're doing the citric acid cycle, you could kind of think about it as you've got two molecules of acetyl-CoA coming in because each acetyl-CoA came from a pyruvate molecule. So when it comes to your, your total generation of your products, well, whatever you're looking at, you can basically think of it as two because of the fact that, well, acetyl-CoA came from pyruvate, which came from, or which came in a pair from your glucose. All right, so the first reaction, step number one, is our acetyl-CoA molecule. What we work so hard to put our two carbons onto acetyl-CoA, we immediately get rid of. We use acetyl-CoA plus oxaloacetate and an enzyme known as citrate synthase produces citrate. Okay, This is an aldol con condensation reaction and then after that we have a hydrolysis reaction. Um, this is an irreversible step. That's, the, that's what I want you to take away from this. Your first step is an irreversible step. So step number two, after we've generated our citrate, well, we are going to do an isomerization. This enzyme is known as aconitase, and all that it's going to do is basically go through a rearrangement of citrate to isocitrate. So aconitase takes isocitrate or produces isocitrate from citrate. Now, the way that this is going to be done is first through a dehydration, and then we're moving this OH group down here and this hydrogen right here, getting those to switch spots. So we're going to remove the water, and then we're going to add the water. We're making cis aconitate as an intermediate, and we're producing isocitrate as our product. Our third reaction is the first time that we generate any NADH. We're taking isocitrate and we're producing alpha ketoglutarate. We're also releasing a CO2 molecule. So the formation of alpha ketoglutarate goes through this pathway in which, well, we're going to use an enzyme known as isocitrate dehydrogenase. What isocitrate dehydrogenase is going to do is it's going to help us go through what's known as an oxidative decarboxylation. So we are using, we are releasing or decarboxylating, removing a CO2 molecule. This reaction goes through an intermediate, and that intermediate is stabilized by manganese. So isocitrate goes to alpha KG or alpha ketoglutarate. We are releasing CO2, and where there was a, so sorry, my alpha KG is COO up here. CH2, C, and then what we have there. Oh, oh, there we go. This is an irreversible step. Okay, now keep in mind what we started with was we started with two carbons. We started with our two carbons from our. Uh, 
acetyl coenzyme A, we added those to citrate, where we citrate was a molecule with a grand total of um, a grand total of four carbons on it. So we made a six carbon molecule, and now we've got a chain that is five carbons long because we just did a decarboxylation reaction. Step number four. Well, again, we're going to be producing NADH. We're also going to be releasing CO2. What I'd like you to notice about this is there are a total of three steps where NADH is produced in the citric acid cycle. And in two of them, there's a decarboxylation reaction. Whenever you see NAD and NADH, as well as a decarboxylation, think about that as an oxidative decarboxylation. We just saw that with our um, isocitrate dehydrogenase. Now, this enzyme, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, we're doing another oxidative decarboxylation. So what that means that we're doing is we are, one, we are removing CO2 right here, and we're also producing NADH. And in the process, we're making a molecule known as succinyl-CoA. Now, this coenzyme A is similar to what we used earlier. We used succinyl, or sorry, we had this acetyl coenzyme A, or sorry, this coenzyme A that we um, used previously, and we're, we're seeing that resurface again. This is also metabolically irreversible. Our next step, <clears throat> we're generating GTP, and what we're doing is we are going to be adding an inorganic phosphate molecule to a GDP molecule. So we have succinyl-CoA, this guy right here. Now what succinyl-CoA is going to lead us to is we are going to be uh, producing something known as succinate. Now what succinate looks like is, and I'm sorry about my face being the way, succinate looks like this. Succinate looks like that. This enzyme, succinyl CoA synthetase, produces GTP and CoAsh. Now, this is substrate level phosphorylation. We saw that in glycolysis. We saw substrate level glyc uh, sorry, substrate level phosphorylation there. Now, this yields GTP, which is readily converted to ATP, and this is a reaction that's at near equilibrium. So succinyl-CoA synthetase releases our CoAsh and produces GTP and makes a succinate molecule, which if you look at, look at succinate, it's a completely uh, symmetrical molecule. You've got COO minus CH2, CH2, COO minus. Okay, that succinate is going to be utilized to produce FADH2. So... What we have is the enzyme known as succinate dehydro the succinate dehydrogenase complex. Now what this is going to do is it's going to remove one hydrogen from each of these. So we're going to make something that is, uh, or we're going to make fumarate, which fumarate is, and I'm sorry again, my head is blocking away, it's just a carbon-carbon double bond with two carboxylic acids on each end of it. Now, this is uh, bound to the inner mitochondrial membrane. And this is the, yeah, sorry, um, we're generating FADH2, and this is done by the succinate dehydrogenase complex. That fumarate that we just produced, well, we're going to use water and the enzyme fumarase to um, hydrate this molecule. This is a trans addition reaction, in which case what we're going to be doing is we are going to be adding a hydroxide group and then a proton. And our product is going to look like this. Then then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and finally all right so there is our product uh, melate now that melate is going to get us back to where we needed to basically continue on with our cycle that melate is going to produce NADH in the process of going towards oxaloacetate which oxaloacetate we saw previously when we were talking about um, um, when we were talking about the um, pyruvate being transported into the into the mitochondrial membrane for gluconeogenesis. This is a very endergonic reaction. Malate dehydrogenase catalyzes this reaction. This is going to produce NADH, which is awesome, and oxaloacetate, which can then be used to continue this cycle around. Okay, so one of the takeaways for this whole pathway is we generated a ton of stuff. We generated NADH, FADH2, um, GTP, and CO2. And it's also important to keep in mind that we're doing this from each of our pyruvate molecules. If you take it back prior to the, um, if you take it back to before the coenzyme A, um, there's, there's a lot of NADH, FADH2, GTP that we're generating by going through the citric acid cycle. Now, all of that is going to be used in oxidative phosphorylation um, as we proceed, but for the time being, that's what I want you to know about this pathway. All right, well, that wraps up the uh, citric acid cycle, and that wraps up chapter, I believe this is 12. All right, have a good one.